it would be illegal for Hamas candidates to run under the Palestinian electoral law that Abu Mazen is, uh, claims is a legitimate one. So to, to, so to say that this is something uh, Hamas is blocking elections uh, ignores the fact that Hamas is blocked from participating in those elections, even if it wanted to participate in them. Um, um, the, 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 the reality, the political reality, not the legal reality, the political reality is a little bit uh, um, more complex, and that is I think that neither side is really ready for elections. Both of them use them as a propaganda club to, to beat the other side. But in a sense, the reality, again, of these two deeply entrenched governments is that both of them are convinced that, the, that, that, that they have more to gain by just sitting tight than by marching forward towards some sort of new elections or some sort of national unity um, or, or that sort of thing. Um, uh, neither one of them wants to be seen as responsible for this divide, a divide that is deeply unpopular among Palestinians. Um, but, but neither one of them is, uh, um, uh, uh, both of them prefer the burden at hand uh, for, the, for the Ramallah government, that's uh, the West Bank, and for uh, Hamas, that is Gaza, um, than um, uh, two in the bush, which would be some kind of pieces of a reunified Palestinian authority. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, in a sense, both sides are deeply entrenched and have sources to continue their, 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 uh, their, their viability as governments for the foreseeable future. Um, what the West Bank Palestinian Authority has, of course, is a great degree of international legitimacy and international uh, financial support as well. Um, and what the Gaza Palestinian Authority has is, I think, deeply rooted institutions in Gaza and some minimally viable fiscal basis as well. Um, Hamas recent the Hamas. Uh, 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 dominated Palestinian Authority in Gaza recently issued its budget for this uh, 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 for this year, and if I remember correctly, I didn't bring the article with me, but they claimed a deficit of ninety percent. That is, only ten percent of the revenue for that budget came from uh, uh, tax collection. Ninety percent comes from overseas friends, and they're able to get that money in. Um, the tunnel economy, which is what keeps Gaza um, uh, fed during this period, is also one that allows Hamas to um, uh, uh, um, enhance its fiscal position. Um, that is to say, uh, one weird thing about the closure in Gaza, it means that anything that goes in or out goes in or out, approved by Hamas and taxed by Hamas. Um, so, so in a weird way, it is more fiscally deeply entrenched as a result of the closure on Gaza than it would be if the, if, if the border were completely open. Um, this split is, is extremely bad. It, I, it, as far as I can tell, there are two things that prevent the split from being total. Uh, number one is, in a sense, something vague and amorphous, Palestinian identity. I mean, uh, if you talk to Palestinians in the West Bank, they will talk about Gaza sometimes, and they will admit this often, as it's almost as if it's another country. That's true on a social and sometimes a personal level, but it's not true on a political level. The split, as I said, is deeply unpopular. Um, uh, uh, among Palestinians, and there's a strong break on both governments that prevents them from sort of uh, um, uh, 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 um, uh, sealing, doing anything that would be seen as as sealing this. And the, the, the so that's the first thing that that keeps them together. And the second is extremely prosaic. There's one other institutional link that holds them together, and that is the Taujihi, the uh, uh, examination that Palestinian school children have to take. Um, as they're finishing high school, that is one place, and as far as I can tell, and there may be other places, I just haven't found them, where the two bureaucracies, the Ministry of Education Ramallah and the Ministry of Education Gaza, actually cooperate, speak to each other, um, shuttle papers back and forth, um, and that sort of thing as well. There's still one unified curriculum for Palestinian Authority schools, um, uh, the Palestinian Authority Ministry of Education in Ramallah smuggles it in by CD or by, uh, uh, or, uh, by, by uh, 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 you know, on, on discs uh, to Gaza. Um, and, and the Taujihi, as I said, is commonly drawn up and commonly graded. So except for that vague symbolic level and that very prosaic level, however, the two are, are, are the, the split is deeply entrenched. There are, of course, uh, attempts to bridge it. Um, um, there have been attempts that have been taken, uh, that, that have been uh, taking place over the years in various locations from Israeli uh, 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 prisons to uh, um, uh, um, uh, international conferences. Um, the, 
effort right now by Egypt seems to be the only viable one. Um, and But to call it viable is probably being a little bit uh, 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 polite. The document that was leaked um, was one that, and the one that the Egyptians insist be signed as is, was one that papered over differences more than resolved them and seemed to spend much more of its attention um, um, thanking the Egyptians for their mediating role than actually resolving the dispute between them. Um, and, and, and in a sense, those, th that mediation has been brought to a, a dead end. Once again, there's sort of another party involved, the Egyptians, that I think has an interest in being seen um, as working to mediate this divide, but not necessarily a real interest in resolving it. I think things could change. That is to say, the Palestinian Authority could be put back together only if the incentives for these governments changed. Right. The Ramallah government is critically dependent on international backing in, in all kinds of diplomatic and financial ways. An international attitude by those people who are giving the backing and the money um, uh, in support of Palestinian unity would change the Ramallah government's tune very quickly, I think. Um, and and um, uh, the uh, Palestinian Authority half in Gaza is probably a little bit harder not to crack internationally, but they make no bones about the fact that, that their number one priority is what they say, lifting the siege in Gaza. That is some opening of especially the Egyptian border. And, 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 and an agreement that um, incorporated within it some lessening of border restrictions. Um, 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 and the Egyptians obviously are seem to be moving in the opposite direction. But, 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 but if, if, if that were put on the table, I think the uh, Gaza government's calculus might um, uh, change a little bit. Absent that, absent some change in international incentives, uh, or absent some domestic game changer like a Shalit deal, which I think would kind of throw a monkey wrench in, 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 into this, uh, this split is going to continue. Okay, so that's the split in Palestinian terms. Now, I've been talking and mentioning the United American policy only in the most polite and oblique terms as sort of the international context. Now let me bring that in directly. What has U.S. policy been towards this, towards this split? And here I'm going to drop all diplomacy. I think that um, essentially it was to promote the split and to maintain it. Um, I don't think anybody would actually put it quite that way. Uh, you go back to the pre-June 2007 period, to the period in which there was first a, Ham uh, a Hamas government um, and then a national unity government. Um, the United States was very clearly um, placing its uh, thumb on the scale of ensuring that this government not work and that the national unity government uh, not work. Um, there was... I mean, the, the, the odd thing about this is that there was very little that was uh, secret about this policy. The exact details, what policy instruments the United States was using, uh, was not always completely clear. But even this training of Palestinian security forces under presidential command was a matter of public record. Um, so that when, you know, in this famous Vanity Fair article that revealed that the United States could have actively promoted a coup came out, um, you know, you read it, what it contributed was lurid prose but, but, and, 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 a, and a few details and leaked memos, but basically nothing else that wasn't, that wasn't in a sense, a more pugnacious version of what had been declaratory policy uh, uh, up, up, up to that point. The, um, um, since June 2007, since the West Bank and Gaza split, uh, American policy has been, yes, West Bank first, as, as uh, uh, Yusuf was sort of quoting um, at, 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 at the beginning, essentially figuring that the um, uh, divergence in, in, in policy performance between the West Bank and the Gaza governments would, um, would solve the problem, that um, allowing some kind of level of security improvements, economic development, and, and or diplomatic process, and, and kind of the mix of those varies a little bit, um, on, on the West Bank and squeezing Gaza hard um, would make Palestinians come to their senses. Um, that has been essentially American policy. And, and some of the mechanics of how this is supposed to happen, that is to say, if a Palestinian in Gaza thinks, gosh, this government is really bad in Gaza, let's get rid of it. How, is they, how are they supposed to do this? I think that question was postponed. Well, tomorrow will be another day. And